Proverbs chapter 11, and we left off in verse number 16, We're, we'll pick back up. A gracious woman graces when you don't deserve it, retaineth honor, a strong man retain riches. The merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubleth his flesh. So where do you stand? Are you a merciful or are you cruel? Are you doing good to your soul or are you putting trouble into your flesh? The wicked work is deceitful work. No, he worketh work is deceitful. But to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. Okay, where do you stand? Are you wicked or are you in righteousness? Are you in righteousness deceiving others? Then you're not in righteousness. You're in wickedness. And your work is deceitful work. And you're not going to get a sure reward. As righteousness tendeth to life, he that pursueth evil pursueth to his own death. You righteous or are you evil? Are you chasing after life or are you chasing after death? A Christian has no business celebrating Halloween. It's all about death. You chasing for that, you know, the, the Halloween time, the monsters and all that junk? Or are you going out there telling people how to etern how to get eternal life in Jesus Christ? Are you trying to train Christians up so they can get eternal rewards? Or are you involved in dead things? Dead things are of the devil. Live things are of God. They that are forward, perverse, heart, are an abomination to the Lord. But such as are upright in their way are his delight. Okay, so are you forward? Are you perverse? In your heart, you're an abomination. You're just as bad as the sodomy. Sodomy is an abomination to the Lord. So is a fraud word, a deceitful, perverse heart. The opposite is an upright man. In their way is his delight, is the Lord's delight. God is pleased with the upright. He's not pleased with a forward heart. And Jesus said, out of the heart, you know, murder, evil, adultery, fornication. Jeremiah said, the heart is deceitful, deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? Just follow your heart. Don't follow your heart. It will lead you the wrong way. Follow the Bible. So hand joined in hand, handshake. That's how business deals were done a long, long time ago. You didn't have credit cards. You, you shook in. You know, I'm a, I'm a dollar short. Can I give you the dollar next time I come back in the general store? I put your hand on it. Shake hands. Shaking hands was a matter of a business deal. Hey, you shake hands with anybody. Anybody will shake your hand to, to get something what they want from you. Politicians shake your hands. Well, not with COVID-19. The wicked shall not be unpunished. When the wicked shake hands and put a handshake to it, God will get them. And that's the mode of a politician. God will get them. 
But the seed of the righteous, opposite of the wicked, shall be delivered. You know, when a wicked man makes a deal, God will deal with that deal with the righteous. And that seed could be your children, that could be the people you've witnessed to. As, this is a great one. And it goes so good for 2020. I get people come up to me, women, I'm a Christian. As a jewel, that's the first time the word shows up in the Bible. The law of first mention, a jewel. First time. As a jewel of gold in a swine's snout. Here comes a pig. He's got a little gold gem in his nose. I have met Christian, well, women who, well, I'm a Christian, and they got that little golden swine snout. Jewel. You know what that tells me? You don't study your Bible. Anybody's going to read their Bible and study their Bible and come across Proverbs chapter 11, verse 22. Yeah, I better not put that jewel in my nose. You know that, that swine is an unclean animal? I think, is it is it Peter that talks about this swine? Uh, goes back to the mire, that woman. And the dog returns back to his vomit. That's an unsaved person. Nowhere is a Christian called a pig. Maybe a dumb sheep, but he's not a filthy pig. So is a fair woman. Oh, she's beautiful. Nice looking. Without discretion, she has no good sense of value. She has no common sense. It's a waste. What's that gold jewel? What's that gold loop doing in the pig's nose? It has no value. So is this woman with no discretion. Desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. How's your anger level? I'm going to do unto others as others do unto me. Well, that's not righteous. I'm going to get even with him one day. Oh. Oh. I can't stand them. I hate them. Oh. And you're a Christian? Yes. You read the Bible? Yeah. Let me guess. The New Testament. Because the desire of the righteous is... Are, are you mad at those police officers that came and tried to, you know, rescue Sarah? No, I pray for their soul. Are you mad at that guy who's trying to shut you down? No, I got him in my prayer list. Are you mad at that woman that gave you the paper? I'd love to see that woman get saved. What about the guy that hates you and his family hates you? I brought it up to my church for them to pray for him. I don't even know what his name is. Well, you talked about suing. Yeah, if it ever came down to a third time, third time's a charm. Three strikes, you're out. I mean, if I got to deal with, with with the issue two times and, and two times a lawyer and they come up the third time. I don't wish evil upon them. I don't say vengeance is mine. Vengeance is the Lord. Let the Lord take care of it. If you got anger, you got you know frustration, you got a, a sense of, of, of uh, revenge. That's not the word I'm looking for. Um, vigilante. That's the word I'm looking for. That's wicked. That's not righteous. Where do you stand in that verse? The Bible says, "Be angry." Hey, but sin not. Oh, yeah, I got angry. 
And I've crossed the line in saying, that's wicked. Jesus got angry with a cause. There is that scattereth, yeah, increaseth. There is that withholdeth more than is me, but tendeth to poverty. That verse does not make sense to the world. A man that loves the Lord, Old Testament, New Testament. He gives to the poor. He gives to his church. He wonderfully, blessedly gives graciously and want to be. Gives money out and goods and time, whatever he has. And he's emptying his resources, his, his, his bank account, his checking account, his wallet, his time. But God is putting that in heaven in the heavenly deposit, in the, in the treasures of heaven. Paul gave much time and much effort, probably much money he had. He gave it to God and the guy was in jail in between centurions his, most of his entire life. The gold and silver and precious stones and the inheritance he's going to get when the judgment seat of Christ is done. It's going to be phenomenal. And there is that withhold it. He doesn't give. He don't give. More than, than is me. He stockpiles more. He doesn't even put any money into play in the church offering box. He doesn't involve in one missionary, never mind any missionary. And to his savings will go for him, for his vacation, for his boat, for whatever he's got. Whatever excess he has is for himself. But it tendeth to poverty. So a man that gives unto the, unto the Lord God will get treasures in heaven. But a man that withheld from God, well, you know, I know rich people, and they've died with their mansions and their cars and, and fortunes and all that. Yeah, but when they go into that coffin, They have no riches. They have no value. And their name may not even be in the, in, the, in the book of life. And woe be to the Christian that ends up in the coffin. And the only thing he can say at the end of his life, the only thing he's got is the suit that somebody put on him. And he's got a bank account. He's got... He's got old cars, he's got sports cards, he's got maybe signature, he's got whatever the world has. But he gave nothing to God. And when he stands at the judgment seat of Christ, he is as broke as a broke can be broke. And then when God lays out his wood, hay, and stubble, oh, look at that, and then it burns up, all it is is ashes. And when he's going to walk around in New Jerusalem with a bald head and no crown. And when we go into the millennium, he has no city, not even one city. Poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat. And he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Now, that's not the liberal today of thinking of politics. Take the Americanism out of the Bible. That liberal, we've been talk, what we've been talking about, talking about somebody giving. That's somebody, you know what? God, I've got money. It's yours. That widow that came up with the only thing she had, to, that was a liberal. So God, it's yours. 
I am not preaching prosperity gospel. Don't you dare say I'm preaching prosperity gospel. If you give God all your money and you don't pay your bills, you're going to be in trouble. You got bills, you got that. I will say about at least 10%. Oh, Sally said 10%. And do it cheerfully. Give a little above 10%. But if you got it, as Paul said to the Corinthian church, and you're able to give it, give it liberally. Give your time liberally. That's the first time that word shows up, liberal. It ain't just about money, friend. It's about time, effort, money, your family. And he that waters shall be watered. What you do for God, God will return for you. Oh, fortune. Oh, no. Jesus said, if you forgive transgressors, God will forgive you your transgressors. I think it was Jesus or Paul said, if you're merciful to others, God will be merciful to you. You're going to act like a jerk? God will be a jerk to you. You're going to be ungrateful to God? God will be ungrateful for you. If you deny the Lord Jesus Christ, he's going to deny you. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him. But blessing upon the head of him that selleth it. Now, I, I don't know if this is out of context. If it is, forgive me. But whoever started the Hindu religion of the sacred cow, when you got an entire nation starving to death, and you got steak and hamburger and meatloaf running around, don't come asking for me from a television star. Oh, please give money to those to those poor people over there in India. I just saw a cow walk by. Barbecue it. <sighs> well, then, then you want to follow false gods because God told Noah, that's a cow. Yeah. You know what goes good with cow? No. Steak sauce. Oh. The firstborn of the sheep, the goats, or the cow belongs to the priest. Okay. What can the priest do with those animals? Mmm. Beef. Lamb chops. I don't know that. I don't know the Hindu language of those cows running around has to do with that, that verse, but. If the government has a stockpile of food, and they do, and they won't sell it, and they do, I'm not talking about just America, I'm talking about other countries too, or they sell it at a price where the people can't afford it, there's going to be cursing. But the person that sells it and sells it at a price that's reachable and obtainable, Remember the false balances and all that? Well, they're going to be happy. When that, I'm going to say, when that Pharaoh came to Egypt, when the famine came into Egypt during Joseph's time, if they came to Joseph, any of those times, Joseph, we need food. Now. <clears throat> yeah, right. As long as the Pharaoh and me. <laughs> We're going to die. I don't care. You know, curse of Joseph went over there. He won't give us the food. No, and he went on there. He says, "All right, you got to pay for it. Here's our money. You got to give up your horse. Here's, here's our horse. Got to give up your land. Here's all oh, right, Joseph. You you taking care of it? Read it, read it, man. They're like, yeah. And Joseph's like, I'm going to tax the land. No problem, Joseph. <laughs> I could never understand. He said they sold their cattle and all that. If you had cattle, why didn't you have hamburgers? What's wrong with hamburger? I know. There's a cow over there that doesn't know how to spell chicken, so she eat more chicken. Maybe that's the problem. 
I wish you stopped doing that. He that diligently, I can never say that word, diligently seeketh good, procureth favor. But he that seeketh mischief, it, the mischief shall come upon him. That's a Galatians 6 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked whatsoever man soweth that he shall also reap. Now, okay, what do you seek after? You want good or do you want mischief? Where do you stand? All right, I, I'm going to give you another example from mischief. I'll ruin your day. You're going to go to work like you're supposed to go to work. and you got extra money, and you're going to save your money so you can go on that big, stupid trip. And you're not going to give nothing to missionaries. You're not going to give nothing to God. You're not going to give anybody who, who, who needs help. Let's pick a stupid place in a stupid event. We're going to go to Arizona. I think it's Arizona. I don't know. I don't care. We're going to go see a big hole in the ground. You said Grand Canyon. Woohoo! I'll dig a hole in my backyard and charge you 15 bucks, okay? When I get enough money, I'll buy the property, build a bigger hole so more people could come and charge, and I'll charge more money. Really? You're going to go spend money go see a hole in the ground. It's like you come all the way to California, come all the way to Florida, somewhere in Europe to see a big rat. But if you're to see a rat in your house, you go out and buy rat poison. Uh, see, that's my job. I'm going to make, I'm gonna make the, 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 what you aim and go for, the gusto, make look it really stupid. That's my job. That's the job of a preacher. So, somewhere I heard somewhere that you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to take all my money and use it for my grandeur. Somewhere I've seen that. Somewhere. And I'm not going to do anything for God and all that. And you're going to get the mischief that comes back. Because the mischief is, you're not being faithful to God. God gave his all. And I'm speaking to Christians. And you're not going to return back. There's a hymn, I gave my life for thee. What are you going to give for me? The whole entire hymn is about what Christ has done for us. What are you going to do? Listen, when you get to New Jerusalem, you're not going to wear those stupid mouse ear hats in New Jerusalem. You're going to walk around, you're going to see, here comes a Christian, he's got, he's got four to five crowns. Oh, where's your crown? I'm Archie. Can't you spell? I blew it in Florida. S T U P I D. Mischief. You're either going to go after mischief, according to the verse, or you're going to go that which is good. Now you got to weigh out to the Bible, because that's a very broad verse. You got to take what is good of the Bible and what you want and have for your aims, and you got if it does not line up with the Bible for correct what God wants a Christian to do, it may be mischief. And that one verse of yay nay, that one verse right and wrong, may really attack you because you may think you got something that's good. And it may be really mischief, and you're going to get a Galatians 6 7. You're going to get mischief on top of mischief on top of mischief. Because when you go out in the, in, the, in the garden and you plant one tomato seed, and that tomato plant comes up, that tomato produces a lot more than just one tomato. Remember, we're looking at verses yea and nay. This is this, this is that. This is right. This is wrong. Now take that verse we just read. He that diligently seeketh good, okay, procures favor. But he that seeketh mischief, it shall come upon him. You're either doing good, looking for good, or you're looking for mischief. And you're either going to get the favor of God, 
or you're going to get double and triple and quadruple back of the mischief. That's something to think about. That's something to pray about. He that trusteth in his riches, ooh, shall fall. You know how many times we read about the wicked falling? I got a stain in my glass and it's bothering me. I'm make it, I'm gonna make it work. So we've seen a lot of falling and it's wicked. A Christian doesn't fall. And if he does, we'll come up later on. A Christian falls, his faith is weak. That made it worse. I know it worse. But, that's a great, but is an interesting word in the Bible. It means opposite of what we just said. I mean, we will, uh, I just talked to my lawyer right now, he wants to meet us down at the farm. We'll meet at the farmer's market and we'll talk and stuff, but they're saying it's bad weather coming tomorrow and let me know if you're going to be there. What's the but? Well, bad weather comes, we're not going to meet. So here, he that trusts in his riches, not God, shall fall. But the righteous, uh-oh, shall flourish as a branch. What is the opposite of the righteous of that verse? Actually, what is the opposite of righteous when we've been doing Proverbs 11 chapters so far? It's wickedness. What is wickedness? Now, compared to what we've been studying so far. A man that trusts in his riches. You know what a man's going to happen in the tribulation period when it comes, if he trusts in, in, in his riches, he's going to receive that mark. You know what Jesus said about that time? He says, woe be to, to them that are with child. Now you wouldn't think a child is riches. But when that mother is in a time of period of the tribulation period and it comes of life and death for that child, what do you think most mothers are going to do for their child? They're going to receive that mark. And what's going to happen when you get that mark? You're damned. So you even have a child that could be your rich. My children are going to take care of me. I always loved the Catholic religion to a fact that in the Catholic religion I grew up and someone told me one time I was at the Catholic Church, I put a nickel in the box and I can light a candle. Okay, I put a nickel in the box and I, I lit a candle. Sometimes I didn't put the nickel in. I lit a candle anyway. But I found out later on I was told by somebody that you burn a candle for a soul that was in purgatory. You're paying the priest your nickel and the candle. That's why they have the candles in the, in the graveyard. The eternal flame. Yeah. That's like the, that's the Pentecostal baptized with fire. No, 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 no. So, and what it is, is your family members, they love you so much that when you die, they're going to pray and pay you out of purgatory. And that's where Jesus came up and said, you, you go to the widow's, and, 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 you, and you devour the widow's money. You, you devour all the widows because you steal their money saying, well, we can get your husband out of purgatory. And I always figured, what if you were a jerk and your family hated you? Trusting in riches. I don't know what year it was, but how many men and women trusted in their stocks that when the stock market fell, they were jumping out of the office buildings in New York City. There are people who have committed suicide because what they trusted, whatever it was, it failed. 
or it did not live up to their purpose. He that trusted in riches shall fall. And when you're standing at the great white throne judgment and you have not put your faith in Jesus, you're there at the great white throne judgment. You're going to fall into the lake of fire that burns it forever. But the righteous shall flourish as a branch off a tree and off a vine. Jesus says, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. Whoa! When Jesus said that, did they run back to Proverbs? Jesus said, I am the vine, you're the branches. Ain't about bearing fruit. Those that trust in riches are not on the branch. They're not flourishing. They're not producing fruit. And they're bound for a fall. He that troubles his own house shall inherit the wind. And the fool shall be a servant to the wise of heart. Well, that one's loaded. He that troubles his own house, alcohol, gambling, adultery, inherit the wind. Okay? You have troubled your family. You have drank their money away. You have smoked their money away. You have gambled their money away. You have been unfaithful to your wife and your children. Or she's been unfaithful to you and the children. Okay, out of all that, your family's been destroyed. Go out there and gather a fistful of wind. Can't. You can't even see the wind. You can't even predict the wind. You can't bottle the wind. The wind is of no substance. And the fool shall be a servant to the wise of heart. Ooh, that's a loaded verse. Are you an employee? <laughs> you work for an employer he was wise enough to start that company you're fool enough to be working for him oh ow that hurt that hurt if you're so smart you can i i worked with and even i've done it oh i could do better you can do better really why don't you have a company oh shoot that hurt you start to and listen I tried to start businesses and I guess I wasn't wise enough because they didn't go anywhere the fruit of the righteous okay is a tree of life he that witness souls is wise look at that soul winning passage in Proverbs I don't read the Old Testament. It's boring. Well, there's nobody in the Old Testament that tried to win souls. Noah? Noah didn't try to get anybody in that ark? When I read the story of Noah, it was not Noah that shut that door, did he? Who shut that door? God did. Why didn't Noah shut that door? Come on in. Anybody come on in. It's still time. <laughs> the Bible says that Enoch prophesied. He tried to do something. Elijah tried to get the people to do right. Solomon's writing to Israel and to his children. I want you to do right. Now what does it say? The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Okay, Christian. Let's spiritualize it for the Christian. What if a Christian at the judgment seat of Christ has no fruit? Where do, are you righteous? 
No, you're not. Let's read on. And he that winneth souls is wise. Have you at least won one soul to Jesus Christ? Well, no. I let my light shine. You're a fool. What about you, Stolly? I can name five people right now. At least five people that the Lord has led me to, for them to get saved. I have wisdom to go and preach the gospel. I've got wisdom where I can tell them how to get saved. I can think of one person right now. He's called for, he's been called for the thing, and I don't know if he even knows how to witness the people. That's a fool. Read the verse about soul winning. How about Jonah and Peter? Jonah and Peter had a little problem with soul winning. Jonah, once you go to the Gentiles. Bye. See you, God. Call me when you got another problem. See you. Bye. That man went into Nineveh with an attitude, preached the message with an attitude, and the entire city got saved. Jonah got fruit from an attitude, and he was waiting for God to destroy that city and got angry that God didn't destroy that city. That's not the attitude to have, so when Peter, I want you to go with them to the Gentile. No, Lord, I have not touched anything unclean. Not me, God. And Peter's the one sitting at the picnic table with the Gentile. Mm, this poor, oh, wait a minute, hold on. Here comes, here comes James. I'm out of here, guys. Bye. I'm out of here. Hey, wasn't there a guy sitting at that table with the, what is that? Pork ribs? Whose plate was, Peter? Uh-huh. We got to find that Simon Peter. But look at Jonah. Look at soul winning. I, I don't know how Jonah's going to make out at the at the, at the the Great White Throne. He's going to be at the Great White Throne Judgment. His name is in the book. But the guy had a terrible attitude about the Ninevites, but they got saved for his... He got fruit. <laughs> that fruit did not taste good to him. But the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. To what? The entire city of Nineveh. And he that wins his souls is what? Jonah was wise. Wow. Peter goes to Gentiles. And I still think when he was traveling on the road, I don't, I don't know. But the entire family and friends of Cornelius got saved. And that moment on, even from the moment that Peter opened the doors to the Gentiles, though it was open to the Ethiopian eunuch, to Philip, when Peter opened up that keys to the Gentiles, God was dealing with Paul in Arabia. The apostle to the Gentile. And it says the fruit of the righteous, the tree of life. He that wins his souls is what? Well, I can't talk. It doesn't say anything about talking. We got gospel tracts. That Ethiopian eunuch had gospel tracts. He was not going to walk away with Jerusalem with the entire scroll of Isaiah 53. And if you don't win souls, you're not wise. And what was the other tree that was in the garden? And what fruit did that tree produce? 
What was the number one thing between Adam and Eve about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Not the tree of the life. The tree of the good of knowledge of good. What was the what was the common cause between Adam and Eve? Sorrow. And when you don't win souls or try to win souls at the great white throne judgment, you're going to be in sorrow when you see family and friends being cast off in the lake of fire because you did not try to stop them. You did not try to warn them. And tears are not wiped away to after the great white throne judgment. That's the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You know was good and you know was evil, but you did not give them the tree of life. And say anything about, I let my light shine. The devil's an angel of light too. That's why people don't like me, because I preach the Bible and I preach it true. And you can get angry, but that's okay. When you're angry at me when I speak the Bible, you're angry at God. I think you said some things are unfair. Uncru Was it Bible? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then you're mad at God, not mad at me. Now, if I said one plus seven is 27, all right, you can be mad at me for my math. If I were to say Tommy is a verb, you can be mad at me for my English. But when I say he that does not win souls is a fool, that's what the verse said. It says, he that wins souls is wise. But there are other things. Whatever I said, if it matches the Bible and does not conflict with the Bible, then you are angry with the Bible and not Stiley Hayward. You're trying to shoot the messenger. And you know what they did with the messenger for Jesus? They cut his neck off and removed his head. The fruit of the righteous is the tree of life, and he that wins the souls is wise. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. Now that is Jewish to a point. Much more the wicked and the sinner. That earth is a piece of land, a piece of property that has been given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you don't obey what God told Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses, the lawgiver. You're not going to get in that land. You're going to get into hell. Now the Christian. You don't do what God tells you to do and strive and suffer. You will not get an inheritance in the land when we come back with Jesus. There, there were three men and God had given them talents. Two of those men, I believe the story is that one had ten and one had five. I think that's because there's, there's a story of pounds and there's a story of talents. I think the story of talents was one had ten, one had five, and one had one. And the one that had ten came back to the Lord and said, hey, I got maybe ten, ten, ten. But whatever, whatever it is, the guy comes up and he says, hey, my ten got ten. I said, hey, good and faithful servant. Well done. Here's some city. The guy that came up with five well, here's five more talents. Now, he didn't bring 10 or 20. I mean, he didn't bring 20. He brought 10. But do you know what those two men did? They doubled their talents for God. And you know what God said? Here's the city. Well done. And then a man that took his talent and gave it to the world and hid it in the earth, he was rebuked and very much trouble and didn't get nothing. I don't know what happens to a Christian who doesn't do nothing for God and does not get an inheritance when we come back 
for the millennium in the reign of Jesus. Maybe you're you're put under other Christians. And I was thinking one day, and it, it, it may be a horrible thought. If God gives me a city, it would be funny if he gives me Daytona Beach. Wouldn't it be interesting for all the Christians that hated me and all the Christians that tried to stop me and all the Christians that tried to discourage me and all the Christians that did not try to win anybody to Jesus and all the Christians that lived for the world and did not live for Jesus and they were an enemy to me and to Jesus Christ. Wouldn't it be interesting when we come back in the millennium and God would say, Stiley, there's your city. Thank you, Lord. And I got a bunch of people who's going to be sitting under you. Well, who? All those people that hated you. That would be a humbling experience. Imagine those people, you know, that ragged me and ragged on me. And, and they see me there with, with, with the crowns that I've earned and they ain't got none. I don't know that's going to, you can take that and get mad at me with that because I can't prove that. But what if that happens? But no matter what, it is woe to you if you are saved and you persecute a Christian because Jesus takes it personally. 